Greetings, ladies and gents. Well, if there's one thing the wife likes to do, it's sing karaoke. And this old karaoke player is a Cavs unit dating back to about 2003 for a manufacturer date. It's already been resurrected once as I replaced the capacitors in the power supply, but now it's on its second life, so I'm trying to give it its third. As you can see here, sometimes it recognizes the disc and sometimes it won't. And again, since this unit dates back to over 20 years, it won't recognize any of the brand new DVDs that are out there. Only the karaoke DVDs and karaoke CDGs are recognized. With this sometimes I work and sometimes I don't behavior, I couldn't help but of course suspect that it probably was the laser that was giving me problems. I'm probably looking at a laser failure. And yes, that next to last digit does have a problem. It should be reading zero and it's reading eight. That center crossbar definitely has a problem. It's lighting up all the time. And I've just learned to ignore that, but that is one defect from the Cavs player's extended age. Now, the first thing I was confronted with opening it up was this number and letter at the top, a DSL-710A. Interesting enough, you can still find the complete drive or just the laser, and you can order either one from several sources, and either Allied Express or eBay will be glad to sell you either the drive itself or just the laser for the drive. After doing a little research, I decided I probably didn't want to go down this route for a couple of reasons. Number one, of course, the drive itself is fairly expensive. It's around 70 bucks. The laser is not too bad. It's around 15 to 20. But the one thing the laser does not come with is a little white bracket that's pointed to with a red arrow. And the actual holes these two screws go into appear to be untapped on the one that you can buy. This, of course, would be a major problem if the laser itself was a metal carriage. If it was a plastic carriage, it would be okay as long as the plastic hole was small enough for the screw to go in. I definitely did not want to get into having to tap the new carriage with a laser only a fraction of an inch away for where I was having to use the tap and then worry about shavings getting in the way. That all, of course, assuming I could find the tap small enough. So, I did a little experimenting. Here's what I found. The existing drive is a pure IDE drive, which, of course, is the now obsolete standard before they went to the SATA drives. Yeah, I'm the guy that kind of keeps all the old junk hanging around someplace because I might need it. In this case, it turned out to be correct. This is an external DVD drive. As you can see here, it is an IDE drive with a converter attached to the back of it to convert it to a USB drive. So I went through the I wonder if scenario. I unhooked the back of the existing calves drive and plugged it into the back of this drive after I took it out of the case and sure enough it worked. The karaoke played just fine using this new drive that of course is the old backup drive. Now as you can see here several things made the swap fairly easy. The backup drive has four 90 degree brackets that attached it inside the plastic case. Now, of course, the existing drive set up higher in the case due to these two brackets. They had to be removed. And once they were out, the holes in the bottom of the case don't come anywhere close to lining up. So now I've got to drill four new holes. All this new hardware came in my 632 bolt stash. And as you can see here, these are circuit board spacers that measure just about perfect. They're approximately one inch tall, which stood the drive up just high enough where the drive door would slide open when the slot tray slid out. Now, I didn't want to run the risk of screwing up the drill and accidentally damaging a printed circuit board, so I stripped the entire case, take everything out of it. Then I drilled the four holes, and then I put the case and all its components back together. Now, as you can see here, the disc itself goes right in. The door closes, and it loads just fine, and it will come right up and play here in just a minute. I'd show you the video, but YouTube knows that's copyrighted material, and they would promptly demonetize the video if I did, so sorry, you just can't take my word for that one, but the video and the audio do come up. 
Now I did try a new DVD to see if it would run with the drive and it does not. As you can see here it appears to load but actually it doesn't. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you found this video both interesting and useful. If you did, please consider giving me a like and definitely consider subscribing. And I think you're going to want to see some of the videos I've got coming along, so definitely want to stay tuned. Until our paths cross again, y'all take care now. I'll catch you on the next video.